All right, so tomorrow I'm going to be on Forex Analytics, and we're going to be talking oil, also crypto, but we're going to talk oil. So here is the stock that I think is one of the most vulnerable in the stock market. Here's Exxon, last 25 years. Look at these prices in the 90s where they plateaued, right? Because it rallied. It rallied. It plateaued. Look at this area here. Go all the way across to here. These prices here were not the anomaly. These prices were the anomaly. A high debt company that took advantage of high oil prices. And now that we're in the new world of lower oil prices, we're at the top end of the range of lower oil prices, right? which used to be the bottom of the higher range. Look what happened. And we've learned about Exxon and many of these other companies that... They just don't have balance sheets that are going to help them. Here's the thing I'm going to talk about tomorrow on Forex Analytics program. I believe now that Russia is starting to pump and the nuclear deal with Iran is imminent, right? Iran's going to add 2 million barrels of oil per day. They're going to tell OPEC, look, we just want to pump our oil, sell it to China. We have to sell it at $50 a barrel. That's fine because... Iran doesn't need it at 70 or 80 like Saudi Arabia does. Iran does pretty darn good at $50 oil. Iran wants to sell more oil fast as they can because they need to finance that country. And if you really know anything about international geopolitics and standards of living, a lot of Iranians live pretty well in cities, right? It's, it's, I know that the American thing is to think about it as all desert wasteland and, and nomads and in, in uneducated farmers, but that's not the deal with Iran. Iran's one of the most educated countries in that region, right? They're not quite at the level of, say, Israel, but they're up there. You're going to add 2 million barrels a day from Iran. Russia already started adding. Saudi Arabia needs the money. At some point, Saudi Arabia, and they just sold another stake in Saudi Aramco, right, trying to monetize that company so they can bail the heck out at least reduce their exposure over the rest of the decade, the price of oil is going to come down again. And it's going to make a run in the 40s probably. But I think in the 50s is where most countries can stomach it. Given that the cheapest oil in the world is in the Middle East, and they could give two flying shits about our oil companies, they're going to bring that oil down into the 50s for sure. And it probably overshoots because traders are traders and they'll push it down lower. I don't think you'll ever see that zero moment again because enough companies have gone under you know a third of the companies have gone under in the last five years but half of what's left are going to go under in the next five years most of the money in oil is going to be made by middle eastern countries russia pioneer a handful of others that i've identified for you but chevron and exxon and worse for exxon and you know, yeah, 24 lawsuits against them, I believe, from state attorney generals right now. They're going to have to settle most of these lawsuits or risk really big damages. Remember how mad people got last week and they found out that AT&T was going to cut their dividend? There is no way that Exxon can avoid cutting their dividend unless they sell off what's left of that co company that's you know, not oil. No way to do it. Their debt is monstrous. And at 50 something dollar oil, they're screwed. If Exxon is smart, and so far they've resisted it, and I think it's going to take a change in leadership for it to happen, they would cease all, all exploration and just focus on the assets they know of, sell off a bunch of stuff, and shrink that company rapidly, pay off debt, and keep their lowest cost assets. But because that's not how executives get bonused, they haven't done it. Three executives in a row. Tillerson got out of there. Tillerson got out of there at, at, at just the right moment. He knows, he, he knows what's happening. So I think that we are really close to wanting to start to buy puts on Exxon. And I think over the next month or two, this is going to be a core trade for those who want to bet against things. So you want to start exploring your one and two month puts. You want to keep them short and cheap 
the idea that you probably have to roll them a few times. And you want to catch one of their earnings releases where they say the thing that I've told you they're going to say eventually. Now, how many times have I told you a company was going to say something and three months or six months or two years later, they say it? GameStop, at and I mean, it's a pretty long list. When you really truly know what's going on with the companies, you can do that. So down here, yeah, I was just hating on them because they suck. But really, for a, for a trade standpoint, yeah, I screwed this up. Should have bought some of these oil companies. Um, the reality that there's still people who, A, think that oil is forever, and B, traders being traders, right? So on these little pops, probably can start scaling into some puts. Here's the other thing you can do. USO is a piece of shit product. What kind of product is it? Piece of shit product. Look at that. So if we compare price oil, just the last year, right? Price oil has done way better than USO. Let's take a look over the last five years. Yeah, now it really jumps out at you, doesn't it? These futures-based products, whether it's for a cryptocurrency or whether it's for a commodity, pretty much all suck across the board. The only time you can ever really invest in them is on backwardation, which is not all that frequent. So I think as this comes down, right, so oil comes down, USO is going to fall. Get rid of that real quick. So USO is at 45 right now. I bet you because of the way that this is structured, because of the way the mechanics of this product work, it's down into the upper 20s for sure. And it might even go below 20 again. So I think buying puts on this is probably pretty interesting too. Right now, I don't see any calls that I want to buy. So I really just think building this short and oil again is probably the best trade you can put together over the next month or two. You know, through the middle of June for sure, end of June. Your July and August are typically slow months in the market. Short narratives start to make their way around because the traders have an easier chance uh, to reverse, reverse the trends here. We know that it's overbought. A lot of the oil stocks overbought. Exxon has all the litigation risk. USO is a crappy representation of oil. So these are the puts. So in the article that I write on swinging for the fences, this is what I'm going to focus on. And I think that if you have the stomach, to just make the trade based on A, it's overbought. But B, we know that the long-term story is terrible for this. If we manage our position well, very slowly scale in over a month or two, small bites, short-term puts, only money that you can afford to lose, tight stop losses. I think that you probably make some money on these because one of them is going to end up, right? Because when it drops, it's an elevator, right? You're just trying to catch the elevator. Don't think of it as some long, smooth decline. You're looking for the elevator drops. So one of these is going to be an elevator drop. And that's when your dollar, $40 put, and it goes to 30 you get 10 for it. You get a 10 for one. You get a 10 bagger. The thing is with these positions, because they can go to zero rather rapidly, you have to take small positions, small bites. And when the charts get like this and you have the money flow starting to lead on the way down, right? Money flow is heading down faster than the relative strength index, which means that there's volume pulling it down. It means we're close. All right, so I'll write up that trade in the Swinging for the Fences article. Um, I will have a lot of stuff out tomorrow for you. And there you go. Have a great rest of the week. I hope you liked the new format.